at IIT, not only IIT Roper, but in IIT system, there is lack of context on agriculture related problems. So we have, particularly in computer science domain, we have a lot of researchers working on recommendation systems, Google, Facebook, banking systems, because there is a lot of money there. But, but there was lack of interest as well as knowledge in, in agriculture related systems. So as a consequence, we decided to uh, make this course and offer this course uh, to IIT students that will bridge the gap between the technologies that are there with us in IIT and how they can be applied for agriculture related problems. So uh, this will also introduce the course that we are offering with the same title as you see in the slide. And uh, so uh, if you have any uh, question, any point that you want to make, you can chip in in between. Uh, you can uh, write your comment, write a comment with your question or you can use your audio. So uh, let us start. Yeah, so with this, we can start uh, this particular presentation. And uh, the first point we have to understand in this presentation is what is cyber physical system. So um, a cyber physical system is, is a mix of cyber system and a physical system. Physical system is anything which we see around. So it could be a manufacturing plant, it could be an agriculture field, it could be an educational institute, it could be a classroom. So all of them are physical system while the cyber system is a computational system which can um, where we can write algorithms we can analyze data so these are all cyber system now in a cyber physical system a physical system would be connected to a cyber system using uh, sensing and that sensing data would be communicated and it would be analyzed in a cyber system and then uh, finally uh, this this uh, cyber system will will uh, will start some control which can which can change the state of the physical system so uh, essentially cyber physical system is is a mix of cyber and physical system and um, uh, traditionally it has been also called uh, embed system the difference between embed system and cyber physical system is embed system is mostly at a smaller scale but uh, cyber physical system could be could be very very large now here in this presentation we are talking about cyber physical system for for agriculture so how this could be uh, seen as we can see here in this slide so here physical system is an is, a, is an agriculture field and uh, physical processes are whatever we do in agriculture field like uh, like sowing or uh, irrigation uh, applying fertilizers and harvesting and then selling the crop to the market so all of these thing all of these processes are uh, are part of this physical system while the cyber system will try to sense communicate analyze the data and will also actuate the uh, the actions in the uh, in the farm so so actually, in a broader sense, any physical system, like a harvesting system, harvesting we are plucking mangoes in a, in a farm. So if you can use some kind of sensors, computer analysis, automation to make this physical process more beneficial, more robust or more scalable, then it becomes cyber physical system. So any application of uh, computing communication analysis is actually cyber physical system because Absolutely. eventually Absolutely. any system we build it has to be applied in physical sense correct correct that that makes sense so uh, in other words we can also say anything we would like to make smart yeah. uh, let's say we would like to do smart agriculture then it will become a cyber physical system or wherever we are able to apply computing in any system will also become cyber physical so uh, in agriculture domain, what kind of tasks are there, how they can get benefit from cyber physical system, that's, is the, uh, that, that is essentially the topic of the presentation. So if uh, we can also see from the, uh, from the timeline perspective, uh, how do agriculture work? So first of all, farmer will try to decide that which, which crop to be, to be sown, what time to be sown. And then he'll start the sowing process and then um, after sowing he'll take care of the crop by by applying uh, by applying fertilizers or by uh, by giving water at, at regular interval at right intervals it will keep on looking at uh, whether 
crop is growing properly or not it will also try to protect the crop from uh, from pests weeds or animals etc and when crop is is ready to harvest when it is uh, uh, ripe and then it will harvest it and it will he will send it to market to uh, to uh, to sell it so this whole process we'll see uh, with in each of these steps how cyber physical system is going to help the the farmer or or an agriculture man the first step is uh, finding the right crop finding the right time when to start so traditionally how it is done traditionally a farmer knows because of his traditional background because of his family background or because of his neighbors that what other people are sowing so that's what uh, he will uh, sow uh, but if you would like to make the process efficient we would um, the computer can help the farmer by telling that this is the right this this particular temperature this particular weather for this particular type of soil is best suitable for this particular crop okay so uh, knowing the environment knowing the weather knowing the also knowing the uh, weather forecast like what would be the weather in next couple of uh, days or months can help the farmer to know um, what crop to be sown so this this knowledge of making crop suggestion it could be hard coded that is uh, that is still not trivial because the, the knowledge is in unstructured manner it is there in agriculture related books and the knowledge is obtained uh, by collecting data manually uh, by government employees and uh, they have uh, some recommendations but an interesting part is you could use ai and machine learning techniques here to observe this uh, crop yield crop benefit uh, for a given year and for, from that you can learn uh what crop in which month in which area would give you give a farmer best benefit uh, for example uh, the order of sowing crops the order also matters so if we are able to collect this data then in longer time we can make an expert farmer that would recommend based on the past experience because currently this knowledge is only in with a few farmers Correct. who are regularly doing uh, this agriculture so the, uh, an automation option is that we collect data, use reinforcement learning and make a crop suggestion system. Good. So now let's also see that if I would like to build a cyber physical system around this problem, then how it would look like. So it would look like something like this, so that there would be some sensors on the field. These sensors are continuously sensing what is the temperature on the field, what is the humidity, um, soil quality or soil type and um, it, it will also see how much sunlight is there how much wind wind speed is there how much uh, soil nutrition are there so all of these things we are collecting from the sensors and they're being collected continuously and now after collection they would be uh, sent to via wireless channels or via bluetooth or via uh, via wired connections also they could be sent to a computer and that computer can send it to cloud now uh, on the other hand, there would be uh, so this their uh, weather forecasting could 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 be obtained using internet and web browsers. Um, then the the algorithms which which um, Mukesh was talking about uh, AI algorithms, machine learning algorithms, and expert recommendation systems. So all of that knowledge base would be utilized to give some suggestion. So the suggestion can also be based on the farmer choices. So for example, uh, initially there could be three, four choices which can be given and then farmer can interact that uh, I have this much money or uh, this is, will this be better? So all those queries could be addressed and then final suggestion can be, can be made. <coughs> now you can see that this is all a local decision based on the environment, based on the current time, based on the uh, current facility. Now, cherry on the cake could be that if we know what other farmers are, are sowing, what the farmer in the locality, what farmers in the state or in the neighboring state, if they are going, uh, if we know that that particular information that could be additional bonus for the farmer. So for example, if everybody is, is, is growing um, same vegetable that, that won't be beneficial for that particular farmers. If everybody is growing potato, then potatoes prices will definitely fall down. So you have to 
uh, you have to uh, sow something else. So that information could be very, very useful. Now, uh, after crop suggestions, he will start the sowing process. So how cyber, cyber physical system can help in the sowing process? So that we can see, um, traditionally sowing is done manually and it's a labor intensive task because a lot of people are involved and particularly in in the in the uh, in growing rice it's it's a hugely um, labor intensive process now the the sowing process could be automated it could uh, cyber physical system can help quite a lot so let's say we are using tractors to sow then our, our tractors could be navigated using a satellite so satellite can tell that this is the path to be taken and that path could be optimized and uh, it could also control the speed of the tractor so that the the uh, the rate at which the seed is sown they are all uniform or uh, for more uh, complicated or more diverse kind of uh, uh, crops robots can be used because each crop could be uh, required to be sown at different uh, different depth of the soil so there uh, robots can be used um, uh, drones can also be used because uh, a drone can can make it uniform so drone can throw all the seeds from the air but uh, there could be uh, because of wind it could be dispersed and it could be become non uniform so in that case what uh, uav based system or drone based system would do with each uh, each of the seed it can put some weight so that uh, when that particular seed will go down in the uh, in the soil it will go at, at a particular depth so for example one centimeter two centimeter and then it will take the uh, uh, route automatically um, now let's look at one of the interesting example how robots can be can be used for sowing so uh, you can see this this diagram this diagram uh, shows that um, this is a good example of a cyber physical system because a robot would be driven by uh, by a computational system to uh, see the route um, now uh, along with that there would be ultrasonic sensors or computer uh, cameras so that they can see if there is an obstacle on the way or not. Uh, so the brown part is the soil, the brown part row hill it's actually soil. It, it's a soil yeah so when uh, the seeds would be sent now seed would be drilled into the soil at a particular depth by, by using this, this nozzle. So now because we have a nozzle we have we have this planter so because of this planter now we can we can put the seed at a specific depth and it can also do some sort of a pro, pro, uh, post processing like it can put put the soil later or it can put uh, some fertilizer along with that in the in the seed so that way each um, each type of crop can have a specific sowing procedure using using robots and uh, which will also be precise all the seeds would be at equal distance and uh, will be more uniform actually this uh, visiting a farm is again a non trivial task there uh, if any of you have seen tractors uh, working in a farm you will see that they go in cycle again and again in order to completely squat or traverse the the farm so it's very much like graph traversal where you want to minimize uh, the tractor fuel the time taken without any repetitions so the path should be such that uh, you do it quickly in most economic way so depending on the farm shape that also that is also a decision that you have to make so that's that also suggests us that uh, graph traversal problems or uh, uh, traveling series means kind of optimization problem can be applied here directly to uh, to optimize what what should be the route what should be the path okay so uh, the the next step would be the um, so now uh, seeds had be, has been sown crop has, has started so now uh, we have to give water and nutrition to the soil so um, to to um, this this is the most important step because um, water is the most important nutrition for for each each crop so um, now how much water to be given when it is to be given and uh, and how much to be given so all of these things can be should be should be uh, given carefully because more water can also spoil the uh, spoil, spoil the crop and it also waste uh, it also reduce the water table in in our reserve so the amount of water if we know 
from the computational methods how much water is required so water requirement can be can be seen from the how much water is required for a for a crop plus how much it will get evaporated so this evaporation would happen because of soil as well as because of because of plant leaves so this particular uh, evaporation rate is called evapotranspiration evapotranspiration rate so this evapotranspiration rate will tell us that how much water will get lost in the air because of transpiration process now um, this water how much water is required it depends on not only your transpiration but also it depends on uh, what is the moisture content in the soil what is the soil type whether is it would be able to retain the water or not uh, how much is the sunlight because of sunlight there could be more uh, transpiration there could be more evaporation and uh, which particular crop and what is the age of the crop so it is a sophisticated function of all of these five parameters so now again i will come back to my point this f could be hard coded based on the expert farmer's knowledge but you know with time the crop behavior also changes so if we are able to collect data of this moisture content soil characteristics and environmental content along with crop yield and crop produce then over time our data analysis methods can be used as this function f that will uh, predict how much water would make uh, the the crop produce fruit or vegetable more tasty or more nutritious or bigger in size correct so now let us see how a cyber physical system that will do this irrigation automatically or will help uh, in doing the irrigation so uh, first part as we have said, seen in our first slide also first part is sensing now sensing here would require different kind of sensors that would be um, soil sensors so soil temperature sensors humidity uh, moisture content sensors ldr sensors will measure the uh, sunlight how much sunlight is there and there could be um, uh, how much is the wind speed so all of these sensor information would be collected and that would be uh, collected by the data logger and it would be transmitted from data logger using wireless channels wi-fi channels to the uh, uh, to the club now since these this this whole system need to be installed in the form and it it has to work throughout the year so uh, it it is usually operated by a solar panel where where there is some batteries which can um, store the solar energy and uh, so that they can work continuously whenever it is required so on the other hand to give the irrigation to give the water there has to be some sort of automation there that uh, the water water motor which will pull the water from the uh, uh, from the ground or which will take the water from the canal so that water uh, motor has to be switched on or off so there would be a controller this controller is usually a digital controller plus um, uh, there would be a relays connected so that it can turn on or turn off the motor and from the water motor the the uh, water has to be transported or tra uh, channelized to the to the field so when it is uh, uh, channelized to the field then there there are um, some solenoid walls so this latch based cel solenoid walls there are the electronic wall which which can uh, which can control the rate of water onto a particular pipe they can switch off uh, a particular um, channel or they can um, turn on and then they can also make uh, some adjustment in terms of rate how much is the flow so from each pipe then there would be either drip irrigation or sub drip irrigation so drip irrigation means there would be a pipe with the with the, with the hole so that it can uh, send the water in uh, through uh, throughout the the pump now these two connections these two systems are sufficient to um, mm, to actuate and sense uh, along with that there has to be a, a, there is a requirement of a controller main controller which would be a, a cloud uh, which would be a cloud or a, a or a laptop we can say here so this laptop uh, this control room is usually in the vicinity it's, it's uh, in the vicinity of the form or one corner of the form where um, using modem and internet it is it is getting the information from the from each node and it is also sending the information to each of the uh, water controller 
and uh, this this laptop uh, with GUI can help the farmer or uh, who whoever is present on the field so that they can also manually control some of the uh, some of the walls and uh, finally all the information is also available in the office this office could be far off from the field it can also be in the current days we can say it's, it's a mobile android phone where all the information is visible where and uh, it can also send the information to multiple fields or uh, or a particular field now in addition to that this whole system can also further be helped by a weather station this weather station could uh, could uh, could be communicated from the internet or uh, we have seen uh, previously it could be web uh, crawlers where they can they, they are querying the weather information, forecast information for that particular location and uh, using all this information now um, it could be a fully automated uh, cyber physical system which can completely uh, do irrigation manually as well as in a completely automated manner. Okay, so now this, uh, the, the, this irrigation, the, the disadvantage of this whole system is, is the initial cost. This initial cost means that you you have you require a sufficient amount of infra infrastructure. So uh, the, these solenoid walls as well as these pipes or uh, uh, sub irrigation or drip irrigation has to be laid out in the in, in complete field. Plus this controller room has to be deployed and uh, the whole system has some initial cost. But once this initial cost is there, then it can save quite a lot in terms of water in terms of efficiency because uh, it will send only the required amount of water to the crop okay so which also help the crop to grow in a in a more systematic way now once this infrastructure is ready this infrastructure can also be helpful in giving the fertilization so what is fertilization fertilization means in, along with water we also require to give other nutritions like uh, nitrogen potassium or calcium so all these nutrition also need to be given so this nutrition otherwise uh, traditionally people do a spray in the um, in the farm now because this automatic uh, irrigation system is already there now that can be used we can send along with water we can also uh, apply these liquid fertilizers and to make a, a, a to add in water soluble solids and apply them using the irrigation channels now the advantage would be it's going to be very regular and uniform so uh, there is no possibility that uh, the fertilizer is given more at one place and less at the other place along with that in a traditional way of spreading the fertilizer there is going to be a lot of wastage because um, it gets spreaded in the air and it gets thrown here and there so that wastage can be saved and we can give the precise the same amount of fertilizer at, at precise time so all of these things also help us in saving the health or the quality of the crop and also the uh, also our health uh, as a consumer because now the the fertilizer is is not beyond the certain level or is at the level which is which is particularly required for that crop so now um, irrigation automation we have seen if you would like to automate this fertigation process to automate the fertigation process we have to measure what is the uh, requirement so here the sensing part would be uh, uh, to, to measure the requirement of the fertilizer at a point and also uh, the, the actuation part would uh, require how the nutrition could be pumped in the water uh, in the required amount so um, this using this actuation and uh, rest of the system can be can be uh, controlled by by computer to know that how much nutrition is required and that much can be pumped uh, in and can be given as a as a water soluble system okay so uh, now the next process after um, he has given the nutrition um, now the the next thing what a farmer will do he'll keep on visiting the farm he'll try to save the uh, the crop as much as possible so that it crop is not infected by um, it will try he'll try to protect the crop from different kind of pest so what is a pest pest is any living organism that can harm the crop any living organism means it could be mammals it could be animals it could be birds 
So, for example, uh, monkeys or cows, buffaloes, deers, all of these animals can can um, can destroy the crop. And at, at some times it could be humans also. It could be humans. I, I remember from my school times, I used to walk for three kilometers and I used to steal watermelons. Yep. I was uh, I was a kid at that time, so I did that, but I, I it is wrong. We should not do it. But humans can also work as best if they are harming the crop. Correct. Yeah. So the other possibilities of uh, pests could be insects and rodents. So insects could be could be mosquitoes or some some small uh, 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 small. For example, you you would have heard of locust attack a uh, few months ago in Rajasthan, Haryana, and Delhi. So these uh, rodents could be rats, snakes, etc., which can which can spoil the uh, uh, crop. The other type of um, pest could be small microorganism which we can't see using naked eye. They are also called pathogens. So uh, these microorganisms they usually tend to create uh, disease, uh, cause to infect disease in the crop and uh, will manifest themselves in terms of a disease. We can't see them but we see their effects. Sometimes other plants can also be pest. So these plants also called weeds. Uh, they outgrow, they also consume nutrition, they also stop the growth of the main crop, so uh, they are also called pest. So if, if a farmer would like to protect themselves, pro protect their crop from, uh, from these pests, the, the best idea, the first thing he would like to do is he would like to identify what kind of pest is there. So for example, he would like to identify what kind of animal is harming my crop. So if it is monkeys or if it is uh, cows, buffaloes, then he'll put uh, some mechanism so that he can stop it. So for example, he can, he can put wires or he can, uh, he can chew them away. To make that process automatic, to make that process um, effective, cyber physical system can be employed where there could be various sensors which can, uh, which can identify what kind of pest is there. So, for example, uh, there could be thermal sensors, audio sensors, or there could be different kind of cameras, seismic sensors, which can be used to identify if there are some animals which are coming. Uh, UAVs or drones can be used to identify if there are uh, there are insects, rodents, or either birds which are flying, and also they can be uh, uh, helpful in identifying pathogens or microorganisms or disease, etc. And remember that currently farmers are using their eyes and ears yep. to do that. Correct. So eyes means video cameras and ears are uh, microphones. So the, we should be able to sense any kind of pest using this. But sensors. we also have to see that uh, the the limitations of human ears, human eyes are, are quite limited. So these sensors, if they are used, they can also sense different kind of radiations, different level of um, spectrum of light, so that they can they can see more and they can be much more effective than than human beings. So um, now this is for for animals. Now, if we would like to identify uh, microorganisms or pathogens, so they, as I said earlier, we can't see them using naked eye, but we can see their effects. Again, using necktie, the effect we will see much later, but if we try to use computer based methods or cyber physical based methods, then we could be more effective. So, uh, because the resolution of cameras could be, could, could be much higher than um, resolution of our eyes. So, uh, further, uh, we can have multi spectral uh, cameras where we can see using uh, near infrared vision or ultraviolet vision. So, all of these. Uh, additional benefits can can help us in identifying <coughs> the the status whether uh, whether uh, leaves or uh, roots or flower whether that is healthy or not now um, because mostly we are using uh, images as an input so the methods which can be used um, for identification of this disease or microorganism would also be uh, image processing methods and um, Lately, we have seen that deep learning based methods like uh, ResNet, Google Net, VGG, Inspection, Inception Net, they are, they are quite popular uh, because of their high accuracy. So we can use all of these methods to, to classify whether our, um, uh, 
whether our crop is healthy or it is infected or if it is infected then what kind of disease is is possible for that um, for that crop it could be crop specific so for example if we are looking at wheat then we can look at the, what kind of disease uh, wheat can have and then it can classify that which particular disease um, unit is a is a specific method which can help us in identifying or segmentation of um, of images now it's not only deep learning methods because deep learning methods are computationally intensive traditional methods are also not bad in um, in pest identification like uh, spot vector machine svm uh, K, knn or elm so all these traditional classifiers can can also be used so what yeah here we are uh, using image processing because there are some other advantages of images as well image uh, with very coarse resolution, we can take images using satellites or UAVs. Even a farmer can take images using their smartphone. So we don't need any additional infrastructure. We don't have to dig hole in the ground and put any sensor there. We don't need additional uh, power supplies or any additional wires to be laid in the farm. So therefore, anything that we can sense using images or cameras, we try to do that. So that, that is current trend in crop protection. Yeah, and that is the reason we see uh, mostly image processing based methods mm -hmm. for, for disease identification or pest identification. So once pest has been identified, uh, identified what would be done, we will, um, these this, uh, methods will inform the farmer and farmer will consult um, a specialist that what would be done for uh, this particular type of uh, pest. So um, then that specialist would, would usually uh, recommend a particular type of pesticides. These pesticides could be herbicides, that means to kill certain kind of weeds, germicides, uh, fungicides to, um, to remove fungus or insecticides for certain insects or it could be some special medicines which could be used for uh, to control that disease. Now these pesticides uh, are to be sprayed to be to be applied to the field now how can we apply because most of them are chemicals the traditional method is that we are uh, a, a person is spraying and but you if you can imagine his his mouth is usually covered and he is fully uh, uh, trying to cover himself so that the this this uh, this poisonous material does not infect him so that's why a automated method would would uh, improve the health of the farmer who is who is applying these these pesticides so uh, a uav based method a drone based method where where a drone can take a payload and can uh, can spray the pesticides in the infected regions could be one interesting mechanism the other could be we have to design robots or we have to install uh, some additional uh, uh, utilities in in tractors or, or autopilot so that uh, they can uh, they can um, do this pest treatment but notice that robot tractors and autopilots are, are less um, useful because crop is already there we don't want to spoil the crop but we still would like to spread the um, or or treat this this particular pest so um, during the whole process of uh, of crop growth so along with protection now what farmer would additionally do is he would also like to see what is the growth whether my crop is growing properly or not so he would like to monitor the growth so this this growth monitoring is traditionally done by by eyes he will keep on visiting the farm every day or every other day and uh, then we'll see whether the growth is proper or, and he may also look at his neighbor's uh, growth and he may see that whether his crop is uh, better growing or my crop etc um, but if we again use computers or if we use cyber physical system then this can be done more precisely if computers are doing this job of growth monitoring then they can uh, they can also infer whether that uh, growth deficiency is because of nutrition deficiency because of water deficiency because of environment because of some pest or some disease okay so uh, there could be different reasons so a computer can try to infer what kind of reason is there and then it can tell the farmer and then farmer can can apply can try to utilize his his knowledge or uh, may be again ask the computer that how it can be um, 
how that deficiency can be removed. Along with that, if we know what is the growth of the crop, that can also help farmer, that can also help farmer to estimate how much profit he is going to make, how much, uh, how much produce would be there, or what is the right time to harvest the crop so that he can sell it in the, in the market at a profitable price. So, um, how cyber physical system can help here? Again, the sensing would be done using cameras and as uh, Dr. Mukesh indicated earlier because uh, image is most easiest or convenient method of, of getting the information uh, plus we have a lot of uh, algorithms around it so that we can analyze. So uh, here also we can use camera or, uh, or video feed to know uh, the status. So these, these cameras either it could be mounted or installed uh, on one of the top pole of the field or it can be mounted on uh, drones or UAVs and these, these UAVs will have a regular flight of the farm, let's say a weekly flight and they will get to know what um, they will capture the information or it could be satellite imagery also. So from the satellite although the resolution is less but because we have additional data like we have a uh, multispectral uh, um, channels so all these information these additional information that additional information can be used to know the growth so um, once we have these images what kind of computer computational techniques we use we use image segmentation image analysis and uh, to to again segmentize the uh, the leaf size or uh, we we'll, uh, um, this growth can also be modeled by by looking at height or how much uh, canopy is there how much green part is there so um, those features along with image processing techniques can help us in identifying that how much is the growth. <coughs> Plus this is, this is a time series data. So we have to see what is the growth at day one, day two, day three, day four. So all of this data has to be correlated to see whether the growth is up to the mark or whether it is uh, overgrowing, whether it is growing less than, than the average. So um, this, um, this is an interesting um, uh, data science algorithms where we, which we can apply here to, to model the plant growth. Okay, so uh, once all of these things are done, then finally crop is ready to be harvested. So how in during the harvesting, uh, cyber physical system can be helpful, can be useful. So um, there are two type of crops we can classify cash crops and uh, vegetables, fruits and vegetables, or uh, we can also call it horticulture. So in uh, in agriculture, the, the cash crops, so they are usually sown on, on, um, on large fields. They are very regular in size as well as height, etc. So there, uh, the traditional mechanical machines, <coughs> we can call them harvesters. So these harvesters are traditional method of harvesting and um, there is uh, very little uh, computers can do, but computers can, can still be helpful. For example, there could be computer vision method, computer vision based methods that can um, that can guide the harvester to uh, again we can plan the route so that uh, we can minimize the um, loss of the grain as well as we can improve the efficiency. We can also save some fuel. Uh, for fruits and vegetables, this automatic or cyber physical system based, based method could be much more interesting because each fruit, each, each vegetable is a different one. So uh, the size of the fruit, where it would be there and uh, when it is uh, uh, ripe to be harvested is different. So there we can use a robotics or robotic arm to, uh, of different height of different type to, to, pluck, to pluck a different kind of fruits and vegetables. Further, machine learning based algorithms can, can use to detect uh, whether fruit, a fruit is uh, ripe enough to, uh, to be harvested or uh, it can also help us in identifying which, which particular fruit, what is the location of that fruit. So all these computer vision based and machine learning methods can, can help us in identifying or reaching to that fruit. And then a robotic arm can take that control and can pluck uh, that, uh, that fruit. So um, further after uh, harvesting sensors can also help us in, uh, in assessing the quality of the harvest. So you would uh, see that um, most of the fruits and vegetables they are perishable uh, goods and many a times they need to be transported to different uh, part of the country or different part of the world. So if they are good enough 
that they can be transported to different parts. So uh, all that quality assessment has to be done again using uh, sensors and radiations. So um, the other part which is also closely related to harvesting, other topic which is closely related is uh, particularly in our region is, is stubble management. So because stubble burning and uh, related pollution problems are are, um, are, are of grave concern and um, so um, there cyber physical system can help us in identifying where the stubble is being burned. So we can use GPS, we can use satellite data uh, and uh, this information system to, to know that where the stubble is being burned and then we can convey to the authorities. And um, so this could be one way of, uh, of helping in the stubble management process. The other could be that, um, uh, for example, IIT Roper is, is designing or is, is making uh, their own uh, stubble management machine. So because these number of stubble management machines are going to be very limited. So uh, scheduling when a particular, when, when this machine would visit a particular farm and uh, where it shall go and how these machines should be distributed, that could be a, a, a nice, um, a graph problem as well as a scheduling problem we can say okay so uh, further uh, once uh, stubble has been has been uh, calculated or uh, uh, collected so that this this stubble can be um, distributed with help of uh, information systems so um, the other part finally like crop is ready and now we have uh, we have harvested it now we have to sell it so uh, the farmer has to sell to get the maximum price so there also cyber physical system is is of quite uh, quite a good help so uh, here um, for example uh, you would like to know what is the uh, what is the market price and what is the market price is the new, uh, in the nearby market as well as the far away market and then he can uh, he can sell his product at right time so that um, he can maximize his his uh, um, his profit okay so uh, further he because markets could be far away so you would also uh, like to reduce the transport cost and um, he would like to predict what would be the behavior of supply chain so basically what would be the behavior of, of market so all of these things he would like to do so that he can maximize his profit here cyber physical system can uh, can be helpful uh, for example each farmer can share the information so there could be uh, sensors in the farm or sensors in the um, in the storage uh, department where they can sense they can collect the information and they can send it securely to the cloud and cloud is supposed to keep all this information private but it can also use this information to give a collective information to all other farmers whenever they are sending query so this figure can uh, tell us um, more about this uh, this approach so in this data analytics approach the um, the information from the field as well as information from the storage as well as transportation department is sent to the cloud so uh, this cloud now have information not only from one farmer or one uh, one uh, uh, storage uh, but from the uh, whole area or whole village and whole city. So because it has all the information, if now a particular farmer or a community center is requesting the information that what would be the price or what would be the price in a particular uh, market and what would be the price in future. So all that uh, data analytics could be done because now a lot of information is there in this cloud. So this information can be utilized for uh, making the uh, informed decisions so this way uh, in this presentation what we both have covered is um, from the whole life cycle of the crop how cyber physical system can be helpful to the farmer to increase his produce to increase his yield to increase his profit and also um, to make things easier for him to, to bring the things onto his his, his android phone so that uh, he can make informed decisions and um, his productivity is also improved he can probably manage more number of farms so um, so with this i would like to conclude my talk and if you have any questions please uh, unmute yourself and um, do let us know So in that course, hello, yeah, yes, please. Hello, uh, sir, this is Mohi Verma. Uh, 
uh, I have joined a part time PhD in civil department under Vijay Anand sir. And uh, I am working as an executive engineer in Punjab Waterstone Civil Board. From Bashi, what I have learned, uh, we can also use this cyber physical system in our water treatment process also. Like uh, in our department, there is a problem in civil treatment plant. Most of our plants, the contractor, what they used to do, uh, they used to bypass the system in the time of night. And uh, due to uh, staff is not available in night, what we did we installed the CCTV cameras at the outlet of the STPs and the bypass system of the STPs. Mm -hmm. And there uh, we have a hard, large number of STPs and we used to keep our operators in the ST, uh, our control room and they used to monitor these STPs where the system is bypassed. We can use a cyber physical system in the Mohit, right? Mohit, you are not audible. Suddenly we lose you. Yeah, yeah, why not? Okay. It 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 is possible. So the uh, the context of this particular talk was uh, was confined to agriculture. Uh, we have not cover the water management part but certainly what you said uh, can be done and if you want to discuss that uh, you can discuss it sometime offline yeah offline also you can discuss so do, do the so things yes, yes please so how do we gain the trust of farmers in terms of them adopting this particular technology because if farmers itself uh, because of their uh, uh, say in the press, you don't want to trust on these technologies. They say that we are doing by our traditional it is, it is, farmers are conservative, right? Yeah, it is not so correct. So, how, how it works is so, for example, uh, we have a good penetration. Uh, so, um, government is doing quite a lot. So what they do, what the what method government usually employ, they, they try to um, try to search for the farmers who are experimentalist, I would say okay or who are early adopters of the technology so once these early adopters are identified and actually they have been identified so uh, using these early adopters we can do some experiments and once other people start seeing the benefit of these early adopters in next crop cycles they will also adopt the technology uh, and i would say the the gap why these uh, farmers do not use technology is is not the illiteracy or not the willingness to adopt the technology but the initial cost barrier okay so most of the technology which we have discussed in this uh, presentation apart from uh, drones have certain uh, technological limitations or um but other than that there are a lot of technologies which are which are already penetrated in uh, in India, particularly in Punjab. But the barrier is the cost. So if we can design low cost methods uh, so that people can adopt them easily, would be the um, yeah yeah that would be one big contribution from that would be the big contribution yeah. from engineers actually because uh, agriculture people they they don't know how they they simply buy machines. So if we can design those machines which can reduce the cost is the contribution from our side. Yes, any other question? Uh, sir, I would like to ask one more question. Please. Uh, sir, that uh, basically one of the most challenge part in our agriculture system is the, our water services and the electricity building agriculture is free. Due to which they are more conservative and they do not want to go for the technology because uh, free providing the water and the electricity is one of the main reason uh, to not go for the technology again this kind of again i again i would say um, so maybe yeah. um, it, it it is possible that you are more informed than me or it's also possible that i am more informed than you so uh, what you are saying is probably correct a couple of years before but uh, right now you know water table is is going down drastically 
Okay, for in Punjab also. In Punjab, otherwise, yes, when water was available only ten feet down the uh, down the surface level, now it is uh, it is available thirty feet down or sixty sixty feet down. So, um, farmer also know all these things. They are getting more and more difficulty in getting water from the ground. So it's not uh, that uh, that bright thing which you used to see earlier. They are also concerned. If we tell them a method which is economical, the problem is economy. Okay, so for example, whatever automated irrigation method I have uh, shown in my slides, that would cost somewhere around uh, fifty thousand to uh, two three lakhs per acre, maybe more. Okay, so installation cost. If we can bring down that installation cost, then farmer would be happy. They will say that okay, we will go with them, with them. so the government is trying to give subsidy and all those things but it's not working out well because of uh, um, these uh, st- cost is still high yeah and and mohit less water is only one aspect yeah optimal water is another parameter a crop yeah. if you give optimal water then the produce quality will be very good very concrete example in watermelon if you give too much water the sweetness will go away yep so uh, what is this optimal water for that also we need some information systems cyber physical systems correct so their machine learning algorithms and our computers can can help quite a lot sure okay so uh, with this i'll uh, cover one or two more slides so essentially uh, whatever we have covered this is also going to be the subject matter of cs 546 the course which we are offering in the semester uh, the course name is introduction to cyber physical system so uh, the overall scope of the course would be whatever we have talked in this in this um, in this presentation that would be discussed in much more detail some more methods would be discussed and uh, some hands on experiments on one or more techniques will also be done Uh, but don't consider that course as a detailed. Uh, we will we'll not go into deep agriculture methods. We will also uh, not discuss things which are not related to computer science or embedded systems, and also uh, mathematical details behind uh, machine learning algorithms, data science methods will also not be covered. They will be used, but will not be um, uh, mathematics behind them will not be discussed. So more about that particular course can be seen on to course website. uh this course website can also be accessed using uh, either web page of dr mukesh or uh, my web page and uh, yeah and uh, if you want to do some kind of a, a term project or btech mtech any any other project so there you can also log into our website uh, there are a lot of opportunities which are available on the our website where uh, you can you can yeah. log in and check it and check this it. is independent of the course this is independent of the course yeah so you can uh, so if when you go to each of these bullet points you will find email ids of domain coordinators you can email them your interest and you can start working okay then so with this i think we can close it's uh, yeah okay yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very much for thank joining thank you very much yeah okay. for your attention also and for joining thanks thank you sir